based in Pasadena, Los Angeles, Mimus Tree is a Christian school for mime, dance, and drama. Students from all over the world are drawn to the school. Mimus Tree has been in operation for approximately 20 years and was founded by Todd Farley and his wife, Marilyn. I love California. I love strawberries. Um, I'm Michael Pierce from Christchurch, New Zealand. My name is Catherine Lang and I'm from Washington State. I'm here to basically learn about the arts and the arts in the church. Well, um, I'm Dan Cassette and I'm from Tolland, Connecticut. It's um, on the east coast of the United States. And uh, I got involved with MIME through my church missions team. Um, my name is Chloe Osborne and I am from Columbus, Ohio. So on the east side of the U.S. My name's Isabel Sutton. I'm from Christchurch, New Zealand. My name is Nikki. I'm from England, a place called Manchester. I'm Daniela. I'm from Holland. And <laughs> I came here about two and a half years ago. Started my ministry to study here, right over there. And I'm um, studying the arts, mime, dance, and drama. <laughs> Mime, the wonderful thing about mime is it's a universal language and anyone can understand gesture and expression and without having to have a language barrier anywhere. And even sometimes when we use music that has lyrics that are in English or in a certain language, people still understand the physical communication. So it's, it's a wonderful form for anyone to use. I met Todd in Maryland for the first time when I was in Holland, like in 92, and um, um, he was doing a mind piece, and I had never seen anything like it, and I was like, this is incredible, and right at that moment, I was like, this is what I want to do, this is what I'm going to, to do. <laughs> um, I'd never heard of the school in America, and for me, it was like, that's a big dream, that's like the biggest dream, you know, to go to America, but I thought I could never do it. So, um, like, after a few years, I started realizing, you know what? you know, if I can do it. And it is one of the only schools that's professionally really high and it is a Christian school, so they use it, you know, to glorify God and to preach the gospel. So um, I started working for a year and saved up a lot of money and came out here and studied with them. I've been studying with them for three years. teaching how to do the wall and I need to talk so I just do a half mask which means I can still do the mime and play different characters but I also can talk and I'll also paint my lips so I still have the I can still be characters but I can also talk. We're gonna talk today we're gonna teach some <laughs> hip-hop. Five, six, seven, eight and one, two and three, four, five, six, I'm just trying to get all the white smooth and not to be like Omar, so 
And for me, this is the hardest bit. Because as you can see, I've missed here. So I get this white pencil and just fill, fill the gaps in. Okay, we start in 10 minutes. If you're done and you have no duties, you can go ahead and go outside and stroll now. Just watch for the uh, signs. It started when I was 13. I came back from Hawaii as a small boy, not speaking English very well. And mine was a way for me to share the gospel. Mine was a way for me to share my heart, my ideas. Yeah, don't be chatting, okay? I mean, you're, you're t you can talk because you're half-faced, but it should be kept to a minimum. And then when I was 15, I went to a college, university for mine, studied for the summer, came back to the solo show, and then full-time 17, and got Marcel Marceau's invitation when I was 19. So as you can see, it's, it's always been my life. Uh, 22 years now of miming and uh, with it I've always used it theater school church college high school I've always used it to communicate my faith and my belief <laughs> What we're hoping to encourage in the other kids is likewise people sometimes don't fit as a doctor or a nurse or a scientist and they have they want to express themselves more physically and, and communicate that to the world around them mime is a wonderful way of doing that uh, we've seen the robot well this is a little bit of illusion mime involving an umbrella, a balloon, and a very pretty woman, my wife. <laughs> Todd and I have been doing it for uh, over 20 years now, and um, we're just beginning to pioneer a road. I'm doing the number called Floating, and it's an illusion piece where, like mime, shows the invisible visibly. And so I do a lot of things where I show a balloon, I show the idea of weightlessness, a lot of fun illusions. This is just for fun and just to show that the joy of the Lord is our strength and that, that we can have fun and joy in the Lord. I studied in Marcel, with Marcel Marceau in Paris, France for three years, along with my wife. And uh, so we teach that French style of mime to our students, as well as ballet and jazz and acrobatics and fencing and other art forms we mix into what we do. But what we'll start off with is in parallel, we'll do demi and point. Demi and down, demi and point, demi and down. You're walking right on the very tips of your toes, but your toes are actually encased in like a box to strengthen, and then there's a shank that goes up the back that keeps the foot in place, and it's all, the shoe is manipulated completely by the foot, so it's built to your own foot. Point, demi, down, demi, point, half, half, half. 
practicing, I like dance classes better <laughs> because you get to move more for my idea. Um, but I love to perform in mime as well. It's just flags. I love flags. I mean, everything is fun. And people sometimes are tired of hearing things. And um, when you see something, it's you know, um, it just does more to people when you see stuff. So um, I think it's just it's a very powerful way to um, you know deliver a message. The story is about uh, our rendition of what we think may have happened in the lion's den, with um, how the angels shut the mouths of the lions and how Daniel reacted. Daniel, ruler over all the land. And in this story, we, we take it and put it in our rendition and an artistic point of view of how what we think may have happened in the lion's den with the angels and how they shut the lion's mouths. <laughs> We do it for my team my mystery and it's one of the children's stories that we do and we think it hits all different audiences. The lions were waiting, licking their pearly whites. But then in an instant they lost their appetites. And they gathered in the day around their Israelites. Said, relax, kick off your sandals, have a seat, boy. If we, we look at scripture, it says in Hosea 12.10 that uh, God has spoken to us by the prophets through a spoken word, has appealed to us through visions and revelation, but has also appealed to us through parables acted out by the prophets. And we see throughout scripture artistic representation. There's 40 mimes done by Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ahijah, Elijah, Ezekiel, Hosea, Agabus, an angel in the book of Revelation. There's the book of Psalms, nothing but songs. There's the book of Revelation, nothing but symbolism. There's the, the uh, 47 parables of Jesus Christ, the storytelling. So to, to say that, that God's word is restricted to just a preached format is inconsistent with God's word because in God's word, in scripture, you find that story after story after story and parable and symbol and action. And, and the word it doesn't just exist in a spoken format. It's also written, it's also enfleshed as Jesus became the word and lived amongst us. And I think that that's what we're trying to do as mimes is we're trying to bring the word of the Lord acted out like Ezekiel and Jeremiah and Isaiah and Hosea and Agabus and Jesus. <laughs> If you want to know that someone loves you, it's better to see it in action than words. There are things that are better done than said, and there are things that are better said than done. And mime hopefully captures, when we mime or when we dance or when we move, we, we hopefully capture an encounter with God that's very, very hard to put into words. To, to show the gospel of Christ and not just talk the gospel of Christ. Science tells us that 80% of communication is nonverbal. It's the look, it's the smile, it's the rhythm, it's the tone. Mime is a very, very powerful medium. We use the medium of mime to capture that 80%. And with that, we can communicate wonderfully, powerfully, without words. Try to make the down softer. The up is fast because you're being pushed, okay? and the other one's a sag. So what you get is ha, 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 ha. When I first saw it, I was very interested in doing uh, like theater or acting uh, in a Christian sense because I tried it in the world sense and it was just 
and fulfilling and wasn't doing anything for me. And then I saw Todd in Maryland back in 1990 in Florida, and uh, it just stirred my heart. in the middle of and just finishing a short stint with a theater musical company out in Hollywood at a small theater. And it's very fun, but it's not after the show and you do it night after night after night, you leave with, with nothing. It, it's just emptiness. It's fun while you're doing it, but it doesn't uh, create or fill a need or a void. But where, when I found out that I'm ministering and doing, doing it for the Lord in this ministry performance, um, it's more of an eternal value. It's more valuable to me. Now, now words of God, the God, so it's straightforward. Now, there's a four. Now, I can have the four. Now, see how I The song is called My Heart Belongs to You, and it's a... Uh, it's a piece that I've been requested to do for a, an Easter conference in Colorado. So I've got Todd to, uh, to help me work on the song and the piece and teach me the choreography. <laughs> language of the body is universal. Everybody speaks with their hands, their body, they smile, they laugh, they cry. And we find an ability to do so. And we have a message that we believe is, is pertinent to every country, every culture, every society. And therefore use the mind in theater, schools, streets, churches, conferences to communicate that message. Now Jehoshaphat was king in Jerusalem a long, long time ago when the children of Judah all worshipped the Lord from the high on down to the low. And Judah was a wealthy kingdom. Everybody's children were fed because Jehoshaphat studied the word of the Lord and did everything he said. But out of the east came an army one day after Jehoshaphat's goal. They were marching right straight to Jerusalem and Jehoshaphat soon was told so he called all the people together, and everybody fasted and prayed. The Lord God answered the people and said, there's no need for you to be afraid. Because the battle is mine tomorrow, it's not yours and it's not the king's. And all you gotta do is just stand and watch to see the salvation I bring. And just believe that for what I've told you is exactly what I'm gonna do. Go out tomorrow against him now because the Lord's gonna fight for you. Three jumping to Hashem. But the army rose early next morning. They marched on out with the king. Jehoshaphat had chose some singers, and they told those singers to sing. And they praised the beauty of holiness instead of shouting out a battle cry. And all the way down to the enemy's camp, they sang to the Lord on high. They were singing, Praise ye the Lord. His mercy endures forever and ever. Praise ye the Lord. His mercy endures forever and ever. Praise ye the Lord. His mercy endures forever and ever. Praise ye the Lord our God. His mercy will never end. Well, the Lord God set up an ambush. Got the enemy all turned around. He started into killing each other, you know, till they all lay dead on the ground. And the riches and the jewels that they left behind It took them three whole days to haul The children of Judah all praised the Lord Cause he saved them one and all They were singing, praise ye the Lord His mercy endures forever and ever Praise ye the Lord His mercy endures forever and ever Praise ye the Lord His mercy endures forever and ever Praise ye the Lord our God His mercy 
parallels not real obvious now i'll spell it right out for you when you see trouble coming to rip you off here's all that you need to do just pray to your heavenly father and believe that his word is true and then step out and shout the salvation of god because he'll win that battle for you praise ye the lord his mercy endures forever and ever praise ye the lord his mercy endures forever and ever praise ye the lord his mercy endures forever and ever praise ye the lord our god his mercy will never end praise ye the lord his mercy endures forever and ever praise ye the lord his mercy endures forever and ever praise ye the lord his mercy endures forever and ever praise ye the lord our god his mercy will never end praise ye the lord his mercy endures forever and ever we believe that god created people to be creative and that even though it's used for a lot of different secular events, it's a very beautiful thing and shouldn't be just thrown away because it's not purely Christian. We believe that it can be used for Christian things. And it's such a beautiful form of dance that anything beautifully creative, I believe, can be used to worship God. Starting on page 40 today in your manual on biblical worship. It's interesting to me that the word skill not only implies our receiving of truth and experience and the way we respond to, to what we receive, but it also implies teaching as well. The students take four Bible classes each 12 weeks. So they take a total of eight classes in a year. And uh, it includes things like studying the scriptures. They have Old Testament classes, New Testament classes, uh, practical classes in leadership and administration, uh, church ethics, uh, personal ethics. The students have a goal to be in the ministry, and part of their ministry will have to be speaking the word, teaching the word, explaining how the arts uh, fit into the scriptures and how they've been restored to the church and how how their ministry as a mime or a dancer an artist has its uh, basis in the scriptures that's certainly a part of your training not just that it stops with you but as Paul said to Timothy that he wanted him to teach others who would be able to teach others who would be able to teach others so there's a continuity and a self-perpetuating of that ministry. I'll probably yeah. be um, touring and teaching, yeah. like teaching the other kids, and getting more training in dance and how to teach. Um, and I think that I'll be going back to Europe and use it there. Probably like train a troop and tour around or um, work in my church or in different churches, different conferences. And it's the purpose of the organization to see Christ um, demonstrated and illustrated and taught through my movement and dance for the mission field and then to train up mimes and dancers and dramatists that are artists first, but are ministers first, are Christians first, who happen to be artistic. 